the first thing that we need to think about is what does this period of time mean to teens from a mental health perspective? We know that there are losses and deaths that are directly impacting individual teens, family due to COVID-19, as well as other um, more natural losses and deaths that may be occurring in families. But this is also a period of time where because we're not participating in daily life the way that, we, that we're used to participating, we're not having the experiences that we don't even know we want to have. Not being able to plan to go to a dance, to not running into friends at a neighborhood store on the way home from school, to life cycle events, to concerts, to practices, to everyday nonverbal communication um, that you have when you get to spend time with, with other people. These are losses and we can help teens by um, listening really closely for what they call a loss and validating that, making it explicit and really naming it as we're all grieving. This is a kind of ambiguous grief. We also really need to pay attention to um, teens who may be more vulnerable due to lack of social supports at home, in communities, and perhaps a previous mental health um, condition or challenge going into COVID-19. This is a time of a kind of collective human stress response and teens are no different than the rest of us, really validating that what they're going through is hard and that they can get through it. They've gotten through other difficult times. Validating the ways that they are getting through this, um, finding their, their strengths, the things that they're learning about themselves and their environment and the world. So validation is key. Joining, really spending time um, meeting teens where they're at with curiosity. I don't mean just um, kind of rolling your eyes and doing, letting them boss you around. I mean trying to find a natural curiosity to be with them and share some um, time of things that they're interested in and um, doing that at their own pace. Lastly, to notice and talk to teens about the ways that they are contributing to the family to the community, to the neighborhood, to their own social group during this period of time. That maintaining physical distance is one thing that they're doing to, um, to contribute to our collective well-being, but they might be doing things like remembering their friends' birthdays. They might be um, problem solving. They have expertise that we can reach to that can contribute to our well-being. Um, is, it a is it a tech knowledge? Is it being able to make lunch for everybody who's at home one day? So finding ways to help team teens contribute and to notice the ways that they all are already contributing will also help to foster their independence, which is something that you get when you get to move around in the world freely. I hope that um, you're able to support yourselves right now. This is a time when um, we are all going through a very difficult time and we, are, we all are human. We're having human stress responses that might um, affect our mood, um, affect our ability to be present to teens um, and may bring fear and anxiety um, into the dialogue with teens. So taking care of ourselves, the check yourself before you wreck yourself, um, kind of message is really important for being able to co-regulate, which is to say to help stabilize um, a, a teen's own fears and worries right now. And lastly, I just share with you this acronym WAIT. W-A-I-T stands for Why Am I Talking? Listen to your teen. Listen deeply to where they're struggling, where their stresses are, validate, join, listen, participate.